The ancient building of the Golden Fleece Inn hides some of York's most infamous ghost stories. From the ghost of a previous landlord that keeps a watchful eye on the staff, to a World War II pilot that will wake you from your sleep with an icy touch. Come and sit by me as we get into the dark past and the terrifying witness accounts that make this one of York's most haunted buildings. Hey friend, how has your day been today? Are you doing good? Are you staying hydrated? If you're new around here, hello, welcome, hi. My name is Claire and I am a lover of all things morbid, mysterious and macabre. I have spent hours and hours absolutely enthralled in ghost hunting TV shows. But you know what I love more than the night vision footage and the EVPs? I love the history behind a paranormal encounter, the origins of urban legends and the raw personal ghost stories that people have experienced firsthand, usually when they least expect it. So that is what we're gonna do. Every week we sit down and swap ghost stories like a good old sleepover. So if that is your scene, I would I highly recommend subscribing so that you never miss one of our chats. Sources this week came a lot from the compilation books that I have knocking around again. So Haunted York by Rupert Matthews had a great little section in there. And the rest of it I grabbed from online sources that are all listed below. So come sit by me, grab your snacks and your water and we will get into it. So when you think of haunted cities in the UK, Edinburgh will probably come up pretty high on that list, maybe like London too. But when I think of haunted cities, I always think of York. I mean, it is referred to as the city of a thousand ghosts, a with good reason. I mean, it even has a shop called the York Ghost Merchants where you can buy your very own ghost. And it is a city that really does feel like you're in another time, like especially if you visit the Shambles, which is one of the best preserved shopping streets from the medieval times in Europe with like all of the overhanging buildings, like you've got the uneven cobblestones and the wooden shop frontages, like complete with like literal butcher's hooks from when they would hang the meats outside. If you walk down the shambles, it gives you this feeling of like putting you right back into medieval times. Like, you know, when you are like bustling through people or just trying to get by and like go about your day. Because between the York ghost merchants and the shop that must not be named, there are always massive queues. So you can guarantee it's gonna be busy. I mean, like all you're missing is the smell of sewage and blood running down the street from the butchers and it's like you've been transported back hundreds of years. York just feels so like connected to its history. I think that's why we hear so many paranormal stories from just about every building in the city. Today we're focusing on just one very significant building in the paranormal world. It sits right at the foot of the shambles and it's claimed to be York's most haunted pub, which is really saying something. <laughs> it's the Golden Fleece Inn. So the Golden Fleece is a great grade two listed building that was first mentioned in York's archives in 1503. The records are a bit murky around the place because back then it wasn't known as the Fleece, but I couldn't find anything saying like what it actually was called at that point. Although the records do tell us that the building has definitely been an inn since 1656 and it wasn't officially licensed as an inn until 1668. So someone playing the game on the dodge maybe? I don't know. It sits on a street called The Pavement, which is called that because it was the first medieval walkway in the city to be paved. I love that, like spades are spades, you know exactly what it is. You know what you're gonna get. And the pavement was the perfect spot for a pub to be. It was like the hub of activity in York. You got everything from markets to executions happening. One of the more famous people of the time to be executed outside the Golden Fleece was Thomas Percy, the seventh Earl of Northumberland, who was beheaded on the 22nd of August, 1572. He was one of the leaders of the Rising of the North, which was a rebellion that attempted to depose Queen Elizabeth I, like basically like kick her out, get rid of her, and put her sister, Mary, on the throne in her place. However, there was a difference in opinion because while the nobility in the North wanted Elizabeth out, the general public just weren't really that bothered. And after failing to raise a large enough army, the queen basically sent 14,000 soldiers to just annihilate the rebels, which is pretty much exactly what happened. They all retreated and Thomas Percy fled to Scotland but was captured and sold back to the English government for 2,000 pounds, which is about 80,000 pounds in today's money. Like, I'd say that was a pretty decent bounty, I don't know. He was then sent to York where he was convicted of treason and sentenced to die. He was actually given the opportunity to save his ass, but he didn't. He was told that if he renounced Catholicism, he would be spared. He didn't, so he lost his head opposite the Golden Fleece in front of what I assume would have been thousands of people because Everyone loves a good public execution, obviously. And the Golden Fleece would actually play a pretty significant, if 
pretty gruesome part in these executions, because what are you left with after the convict has finally shuffled off this mortal coil? Their body! And so the bodies of those that were executed on pavement were actually stored in the cellar of the Golden Fleece until their families like came to collect them. And let's not forget that most of these people that were beheaded here, they weren't the most stable of people. Like we're not talking about the highest of society here. It's highly likely that there were more than a few bodies that wouldn't have been claimed by any family. So who knows like how long their unclaimed bodies sat in the cellar of the pub and then what happened to them afterwards? Who knows? But aside from acting as a makeshift morgue, the Golden Fleece was actually an important spot for the merchants of York too, because it's thought that the Golden Fleece was owned by members of the Merchant Adventurers Guild. And these guys were basically like people, they would risk their own money, they'd venture their own capital into trading with other countries. York's greatest export at the time was woolen fleeces, and so that's what the merchants would have been trading in. The Merchant Adventurers Guild also owned a guild hall that was just behind the Golden Fleece, so the inn was like in the perfect place for merchants from like all over the country to travel to York, trade, socialise. Like it's no different from like business networking events of today, like the schmoozing that goes on now. And I only know that schmooze is the right word because of The Sims 2, unashamedly. Like where you'd have to schmooze the headmaster to get your kids into private school. Oh, those were simpler days. But basically if you were looking to buy or sell wool, the Golden Fleece was like the place to be. You could stable your horses in the courtyard behind the pub, get some food and ale down you while you're like chatting with the local merchants and then grab yourself a room for the night so you wouldn't have to travel back. Doesn't sound like a bad little business trip for the 1500s. And this was the case for hundreds of years and that's why by the year 1733, the pub was known as the Fleece. The name the Golden Fleece came a bit later after, although like I couldn't really find like exact dates. There isn't really a great deal of information on the landlords of the inn over the years either, but there was one couple that deserves a mention as their influence, like you can still see it on pavement today. So in the early 18th century, the Golden Fleece was owned by John and Alice Peckett. And these were pretty affluent people of York at the time like they owned multiple properties in the area and they were living in the building next to the Golden Fleece. John's influence would reach new heights in 1702 when he became the Lord Mayor of York. I would say he's doing pretty well for himself. Apparently, Alice grew rather accustomed to being known as Lady Peckett as she continued with the title even after John was like no longer Lord Mayor because like you would only serve one year. And it's also said that Alice was absolutely in love with the Golden Fleece and continued to live in the house next to it after John had passed away, which I couldn't find the exact year that he died. So if you know it, please do let me know in the comments. Unfortunately, Lady Alice Peckett died in 1759 and the courtyard behind the Golden Fleece was renamed after her in the 1780s, becoming Lady Peckett's yard. The Golden Fleece continues to change hands, like passing through all of the different landlords over the years. And even hundreds of years on, it seems to be just as popular as ever. During World War One, soldiers really seem to take a shine to the place, as apparently in 1915, the landlord was taken to court for allowing soldiers to drink outside of the hours that their military orders allowed them to. <laughs> I mean, come on, like it was 1915. I can imagine the landlord was being a little bit more lenient on them. They'd probably seen some things by that point. And that's about the history on the place. There isn't really a huge amount more that I could find. But if you've got any more interesting stories from the years or like good book recommendations that talks a little bit more about the Golden Fleece, please do let me know. So considering the inn is hundreds of years old, it's in pretty decent shape. It's had a few refurbishments over the years and if you like walk through the place it does seem a little wonky and that's because it doesn't have proper foundations like it's built on an ancient wooden frame so really it's doing all right one thing i absolutely love about the golden fleece is that they really lean into the whole paranormal narrative around the building they've even got on display the replica of the skull of a woman called elizabeth johnson elizabeth had been found guilty of trying to use a forged one pound note in 1800 which would have been worth like 107 pounds in 2023 money she was sentenced to death for the heinous crime of intending to defraud the Bank of England. And so she was hanged on Knavesmere on the 23rd of August, 1800. Side note, this was also the same gallows that Dick Turpin was executed at. So there you go, the more you know. So this replica of Elizabeth's skull had lived on the wall of the Golden Fleece 
peacefully until some charming delinquent in 2022 decided that he wanted to take Elizabeth home with him after the New Year's party. Luckily, the CCTV camera had picked up a clear view of who this guy was. And when police tracked him down and questioned him, he like immediately admitted it and showed police the skull, which was sitting on top of his fireplace. Like, dude. But I guess it's okay, Elizabeth is back where she belongs. There is also a regular that you may come across, but don't expect much conversation out of him. He's the Golden Fleece's resident skeleton called Saul Goodfellow. It's just fun, isn't it? It's fun. Fun. I love it. And so if you didn't know, the pub is still open to this day. You can go in there for a drink and some food and you can also stay in one of the four bedrooms. These are the Shambles Room, Lady Peckett's Room, St. Catherine's Room and the Minster Suite. I keep saying min Minister, it's Minster. Minster, York Minster. There's an interesting story with St. Catherine's Room. It had a bathroom that just completely disappeared off the building plans for like more than 200 years. Like I'd love to know how you do that, how you can just lose an entire room. Room. But anyway, they found it again when they discovered the bathroom in 2000. And that's just one of the things that makes the Golden Fleece so intriguing. It's like, what other secrets are you hiding? What else is lurking in that ancient building there? I'll tell you what we do know is lurking in there. Ghosts. Lots of them. It's said to be haunted by between five and seven resident ghosts, although some people claim to have identified more than that. And they're like, all over this place. There has been paranormal activity reported in every single room of the pub, from the cellar to both of the bars, the function room and the bedrooms. So we have a lot to cover. You should recognize the first ghost that we're gonna talk about. It's apparently the spirit of Lady Alice Peckett herself. I mean, it makes sense though, doesn't it? Like she loved the Golden Fleece in life so much that it's no surprise that she came back to it in death. She has been reported on multiple occasions. Guests that are staying the night and even people that are just drinking in the bars have seen her walking in the corridors and the staircases. And even people that have had like no idea on the specifics of the apparitions at the pub have reported seeing a woman wearing old clothes just walk past them. And like it could have just been a tour guide like wearing like old clothing or something because there's loads around York doing like the ghost tours and things like that. Like it would be easy to think nothing of it and just carry on about your day. Like there's just something strange about her. Her. Like you ask your friends if they saw the woman, but they just respond, what woman? One man reported seeing this woman in her old dress walk past him from the front bar into the back and thinking it was a bit odd. He followed her into the back bar where he found that it was completely closed in darkness. There was not another soul in there. There was also no other door or anywhere that that woman could have gone. She appears all over the Golden Fleece, but seems to love the Shambles room and of course Lady Peckett's room. You can usually tell when you're about to encounter her as the sweet smell of old perfume seems to follow her. And while she is a fairly neutral spirit, she very much still classes herself as boss of the place. Apparently she's been known to move the furniture around if she doesn't like the way that the staff have arranged it. There is also reports of another female entity, but it seems unclear about whether this is a different female or just Lady Peckett in different areas. She's described as being a younger woman that's dressed in black. And she's been witnessed standing in the doorway of St. Catherine's room, staring at the guests in silence. People that stay in this particular room have mentioned that the vibe feels like super oppressive. Some even saying that they felt like invisible weights being pressed down on their shoulders. Considering that this darker, like more oppressive entity only seems to appear in St. Catherine's room and how wildly different the reports of these two female apparitions are, I'm inclined to think that yeah, they're probably two different separate entities. But we've got no information or insight into who this darker apparition is. So if you know, or you've got more insight on her, you know what to do. That that means comment down below in case you don't know what to do. But those aren't the only resident ghosts that seem to pop up every now and again. So the first entity is known as One-Eyed Jack. He manifests wearing a red coat, a powdered wig, and a tri-cornered hat, which would have been the height of fashion in the 17th century. Apparently he can be seen like nervously pacing up and down the bottom bar, holding a flintlock pistol. Mediums that have picked up on One-Eyed Jack believe that he died at the Golden Fleece, but there are no records of who he was or any idea of what actually happened to him. 
him. The other entity that calls the bottom bar home is known only as the grumpy man. As his name suggests, he looks just like a grumpy old man crouching in a small like alcove, glaring at anyone that dares make eye contact with him. Some stories report that if you approach him, he will curse you under his breath before disappearing, but then other stories say that he's never said anything and will just glare at you. Either way, everyone says that he is a pretty negative entity, leaving behind a horrible feeling of dread, with people reported feeling lightheaded and dizzy in the bottom bar area when he's about. Not the kind of atmosphere you want while you're trying to get your beer buzz on. But not all of the ghosts that are reported at the Golden Fleece are out to get you. On multiple occasions, the spirit of a young Victorian boy has been reported in the top bar. The story goes that one day he was playing in the pub, just amusing himself when he ran out onto the street. And we've already spoken about pavement a little bit, like it's a very busy street. There would have been a lot going on all the time, especially like back in the Victorian times. Tragically for this boy, he ran out at exactly the wrong moment and got trampled to death by the brewery's dray horse that was walking past to deliver beer to the inn. He rarely interacts with the living and doesn't always manifest as like a visual entity, but he does sometimes like to play around and pull pranks on people in the pub. And you know you've been got by him as you'll faintly hear the sound of a kid like softly <laughs> giggling. But it's not just drinkers that report paranormal activity. If you think you're gonna get a good night's sleep at the Golden Fleece, yeah, no you won't. <laughs> I mean, let's be real, like anyone staying at the Golden Fleece overnight is not there for the sleep quality, are they? This is especially true for the bedroom like right at the top, which I believe is the Minster's room, but I'm not quite sure. Basically, whichever bedroom is like right at the top of the stairs is where you could potentially be woken up by a Mr. Jeff Monroe. The story goes that Jeff Monroe was a Canadian airman that was staying at the Golden Fleece in 1945. And like most soldiers, he was partial to a drink or two. And after a long night of making rather merry in the bar. Last orders have been called and the guests have gone up to their bedrooms for the night. But there was a commotion coming from the top bedroom, followed by a loud, dull thud from outside the front door of the Golden Fleece. When people went outside to investigate, they found the body of Jeff Monroe lying in a pool of his own blood in the street. He'd fallen out the window from the top bedroom, or maybe he was pushed, we don't know. But it seems like his spirit made its way back to the top bedroom. There have been multiple reports of guests staying in the night in that room, being woken up in the dead of night by the touch of an ice cold hand. Terrifying. When they start to come around and open their eyes, they see a dark figure dressed in full military uniform standing at the foot of their bed watching them. No, no thank you. There are so many reports of other ghosts being witnessed too. Like apparently there's a spirit of a young girl that likes to hang around the kitchen. She will like appear and disappear in front of people. There's also a really interesting story about phantom Roman soldiers that appear in the cellar, like marching through before disappearing into the walls. They don't acknowledge the living. They're just like marching through along the old Roman road that would have ran through the area before the pub was built. And it's interesting that story is connected to the Golden Fleece as there's another super famous report of exactly the same phenomena happening in another building in York, the Treasurer's House. And if you want to know more about that story, I covered it a little in my video about the stone tape theory, so I'll link it somewhere if you want to check that out too. The thing with the Roman soldiers of the Golden Fleece though, is that I couldn't trace this story back to like a particular witness. So I'm inclined to take that report with a pinch of salt and that it might have just like been conveniently added into the roster of spooks at the pub. But then again, York was a big Roman town and there would have been a lot of Roman soldiers around, a lot of Roman roads, like, I don't know. So what do you think? Let me know your thoughts below. Was there Roman soldiers? Was that just taken from the treasury house? What do you think? So York is a very dog friendly place and the Golden Fleece actually allows dogs in the bar. My dogs would be in their absolute element in a place like that, packed with people. They just think all of these people are there to see them. Like, look at all of these new best friends. And so if you're stopping for a drink in the Golden Fleece, it wouldn't be unusual to feel something small brush past your legs. And then if you're anything like me, you'd like reach down to say hi to the dog that's like just brushed past you, right? The thing is, sometimes there won't be anything there at all with absolutely no explanation for what just brushed past your leg. Ghostly animals have also been reported in the bedrooms. One guest that was staying was woken up in the middle of the night to the unmistakable feeling of a cat jumping onto the bottom of the bed. Wondering how the hell a cat would have got into the bedroom, they sat up only to see, yes, there was a cat in fact sitting at the bottom of their bed. Before they could do anything, it jumped back off the bed and disappeared through the bedroom wall. Which sounds about right for a cat, like 
They want you to know that they're there, but don't give me any attention. I'll come to you on my terms, thank you very much. Even with all the infamy around the place, so many people reported that, yeah, the Golden Fleece is a nice place to stop, have a drink, good food, nice people, like all of that. But a lot felt also that there is something just not quite right. Almost like sometimes the mask slips a little and you could have sworn that the temperature just dropped about 10 degrees and that icy cold feeling of dread wasn't there a second ago. And it's the staff members, the people that spend the most time there that really feel it. So many members of staff say that the place is super creepy and just gives them the chills just to think about. But some staff members got it even worse as they've reported that they've had their hair like yanked back. And then when they turn around to see the idiot that did it, there's no one there. And there's one spirit in particular that keeps a very close eye on staff members. Apparently at some point in the Golden Fleece's history, there was a landlord that hung himself in the bar area. And the story goes that in that part of the bar where he supposedly hung himself, there's a false ceiling. Above that false ceiling is the hook that he used to hang himself on, apparently. I'm assuming maybe it's because like the building's a grade two listed building, like they can't go like making holes in ceilings or something to actually check if it's there. But we don't know who this landlord is, when this happened, if it happened. But what we do know is that his spirit is still there watching over the staff. And he's not the nicest. Some staff members have reported feeling a tightening around their necks, like exactly in the spot behind the bar where the hook is supposed to be. That's not the only way that he makes sure that the staff know he's keeping an eye on them though. He'll make his presence known by a very strong, unmistakable burning smell behind the bar. You'd be hit with this like smell, smack in the face, like you cannot mistake it for anything else something is on fire around here. But if you moved away from the area trying to look for like the source of the burning, it would just completely disappear. There was one guy that was on a trial shift at the pub who reported this smell to the landlord, like his potential boss. The landlord asked him to let them know if it came back. At the end of the shift, the landlord went up to the guy and asked like, did you smell that burning smell again? Like truthfully, the guy said, nope, didn't, only smelled it that once and that was it. On the spot, the landlord said to him, good, you've got the job. Huh? What? What, what just happened? <laughs> Turns out that wasn't the first time that this had happened. His boss went on to tell him that the previous landlord was testing the potential new recruit. If he'd smelled the burning smell again, then that meant that the ghost didn't trust him. They'd literally got a psychic test as part of the interview process there. Apparently, the staff members that had mentioned smelling the burning smell multiple times over the course of working there had been the ones that were stealing from the pub. And the ghost of this landlord really isn't shy. In 2014, a woman was at the pub having dinner and she was just like snapping some photos as they were coming back to do a paranormal investigation later on that evening. While she was taking the photos, there was like, there was nothing really weird going on, everything was fine. But later on, they noticed something most definitely weird about one of the photos. There was quite clearly the dark shadow of a head and shoulders facing them from behind the bar. There was another member of staff to the left of the figure, but she was adamant that there was no one else behind the bar with her at the time. Super creepy. And like with any haunted location, there are plenty of other weird things going on. Everything from door slamming shut, disembodied footsteps on the staircases, and even candles that apparently light themselves. Dogs are often seen growling and barking at something that we humans just cannot see. And people have reported hearing their name being called, even when they know that they're completely alone. With all of the paranormal experiences reported at the Golden Fleece, like, it's really not difficult to see why this pub is claimed to be the most haunted in York. But what do you think? Have you ever felt something in the Golden Fleece or had something weird happen to you? Please do let me know your thoughts down below. I love reading other people's ghostly experiences. I very much enjoyed reading about the Golden Fleece. I spent a lot of time on this one. We did visit very briefly the last time we were in York, but it was just so ridiculously busy that we couldn't even get to the bar. So we didn't even like stay very long. I don't have any personal experiences to add. One thing about this one is that it does really lack actual hard proof or records behind the things that have been claimed. Like if you look even a little bit into the Golden Fleece, you'll find so many different websites saying the same thing. The records began in 1503. The courtyard behind is named after Lady Peckett. The airman appears to people in the middle of the night. And so they've just like been repeated so many times that people just take that as fact, that that's the story of the Golden Fleece. And that's fine, like it's an absolutely brilliant story, very interesting building. And in my opinion, like 
most definitely haunted. I, like, I definitely do believe that it is haunted. There have been so many accounts of people witnessing things and experiencing things, so like that makes me lean towards the fact that yes, it probably is haunted. But for me personally, like, I want to know the history. I want to know the facts because I want to give you the facts. But also it just makes the paranormal stories so much more compelling when you know it's backed up by like actual historical fact. Like one of the spirits would be so much more compelling if we actually knew for sure. Like that landlord that apparently hung himself in the bar. Who was he? When was he the landlord? When did he die? Was there actually a landlord that did hang himself? Has anyone ever taken the false ceiling off to see whether the hook is still there? Like imagine if you had all of that information and then coupled that with the unexplained photo of the shadow behind the bar. Like that would be insane. But a lot of the time, the records are just lost to history or the evidence just doesn't exist. So all we have are the stories passed down through word of mouth until someone puts them on the internet and then everyone copies it. But anyway, I did my utmost to try and dig into every little avenue possible to try and find like a list of landlords over the years to see who was executed opposite the pub, to try and find Jeff Monroe's military records from Canada. But unless I've spoken about it here, I couldn't really find anything else. So I've just given you everything that I could find. So if you know of anything that I've missed, any extra ghost stories, your own paranormal experiences, or if you have records or proof that can add to this story, please, I would absolutely love to know. Or if you've got any other stories from other places in York. I mean, come on, you know that we're gonna be coming back to this place time and time again. There's a thousand ghosts to cover in York, so there's plenty to chat about. If you enjoyed this story, I would be so incredibly grateful if you would hit the like button and I would love to see you back here for another story sometime. So maybe, I don't know if you fancy it, you might wanna subscribe. Anyway, that is all from me today. I cannot wait to chat with you more tomorrow. So until next time, sleep safe. By the breweries, by the brew, brewery, bro, by the breweries, by the breweries, breweries, by the breweries, breweries, by the breweries, breweries.